Okay, so now that you are signed into AWS Educate and you are in your EC2 instance of AWS, we're going to go ahead and launch an instance. And this is, of course, that machine that we're going to be using to do all of our lab work on, whether you're building databases, writing programs, or just studying IT operations. We're going to set up a system for that. In this case, we're going to set up a Windows Server 2019 install. So go ahead and click the arrow and launch instance. You'll notice you could launch from a template since we don't have any templates to work from. We're just going to launch the instance. So let's do it. Click on launch instance wait for it to load. Notice you, you have a, uh, a menu of systems to choose from and it's really amazing. Um, you can select Amazon's Linux, you can use Red Hat which is free tier eligible meaning it won't use any credits. Ubuntu, a bunch. So you could explore this if you want but for this we're going to use the Microsoft Windows Server 2019 base. Go ahead and select that. This is essentially automating that process where we used to actually install the operating system from scratch. So really you're just saying I want this OS and I want this hardware profile. As soon as you, you launch it, it'll just provision the hardware on Amazon's end and you'll have the system. And all you'll need to do is remote into it. You don't have to worry about managing the physical system, the power, you don't have to worry about any of that, that's all on Amazon. On our end, we just got to maintain the operating system and the access to it. So I'm going to pick, you know, if I were you, it depends on what you're doing really. Um, I'm just going to pick the free tier eligible one because I'm being, you know, a little cheap. But if you needed some more power, and you needed some more processors, or you needed some more memory or, heart or storage space, you could always change that over time. That's why they call this EC, or Elastic Compute, because it, it can stretch, if you will. So I'm going to pick the general purpose one, one gig of RAM, go through the, configure the instance details. This stuff's important, it really is, but for this particular video and exercise, you really don't need to know about virtual private connections and the subnets, but just know that all of this stuff, this is the networking behind the scenes. This is the virtualized network, meaning, you know, your computer is a, just like a computer you would sit at is being placed on a network that's virtualized. So it would matter if you had one or two computers you wanted to connect together in the cloud, you, you would want to be pretty um, consistent across these settings. You'd want to use the same subnet and maybe even be in the same VPC. But for now, we can leave these default since we're not doing anything too sophisticated with networking in this video. So go on to the next one, which is storage. That's like your hard drive or your solid state drive. Notice that by default, it's a general purpose S SSD. You could use a ma magnetic drive, which would cost less, but we want those SSD speeds. How, however many gigs you need, you should, I mean, if you're, if you're hosting projects on this, databases, uh, code, I would give myself some room. You know, you could always change this again, but uh, I wouldn't leave that at 30. 30 is not really that much storage space these days. So go to tags. We don't worry about tags here. Security groups are important. Um, notice there's already a rule in place which allows on AWS's network the remote desktop protocol uh, using RDP, we could connect from any network. That's what this means. That's a network statement in Cedar notation that shows any network, meaning from anywhere in the world, as long as I have the appropriate information and keys, I could remote into this system as long as it's running. Um, you could get more secure with this and you could say put in the public IP address of just your house or just the locations you work from, but one of the benefits of the cloud is that you can have like ubiquitous access. So let's move forward with this. I just want you to know that um, this is kind of important because that means anyone who at least knows the instance ID or the IP address of your server, public IP, it you know you'll be a, they'll be able to at least attempt to connect. They'll still need some of the things I'm going to show you next. So let's go ahead and review and launch, and then go ahead and launch it. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to create a key pair. And this is, to, this is a 
key-based authentication, meaning if, if you don't have a key that we're about to create or the key that we create, you will not be able to connect. So I'm just going to call this example key. So you, you don't want to lose this either because you may lose access to your, your, your system. So go ahead and download that key. Keep it safe. Notice it's a .pem file. Um, and then you're going to launch the instance. So notice it's right now it's automating the install, it's automating the building of a network, it's automating all that. Um, makes it so much easier for us to just get this thing up and going. I'm going to give this time to load, but we could actually see how long does it take to load the system. Hopefully I can beat the timer here. I want to see how, how long it would take. So let's start that. Let's see from, from when this turns to pending to running. Right, I mean it's up now. So that was under 10 seconds that an install of an operating system happened, the setting up of the network and the security group, which is essentially a firewall rule. All that happened in, I mean that's amazing, in, in under 10 seconds. So we'll see if it's officially set up by trying to remote into it. So to remote into it, you want to click on the instance ID, which is how um, AWS identifies instances in devices on their network. But you can see here it has a public IP accessible over the public internet and a public DNS name which is starts with EC2. This is how you tell that Amazon um, set up a, you know, that Amazon set the system up as if it starts with the host name EC2. So how do you connect to it you might be wondering. You're like I don't know what to do. I just clicked on this summary. You can do it several ways. There's a lot of different links in AWS. It can get kind of confusing, but you'll get used to it as you use it. You go to connect, forgive, forgive this message, go to RDP client. Notice this is remote desktop protocol. If you're on a Mac, you should probably download remote desktop for Windows. There is an app for that. But if you are on Windows, you have remote desktop installed already. So download the remote desktop file. Here's how we're going to get the password here. Check this out. This is cool. And I, I'm okay with you seeing my password for this because this is just an example video. Uh, but in real life, I would not, if this was my production system, I would not be showing you my password. Right? So we see get password. Click on that. Oh, we got to give it some time. It looks like please wait four minutes after launching. So it officially has an auto generated everything. So maybe 10 seconds wasn't enough time to wait. So let's give it some time. It's still initializing the system. I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead for when that works and then I'll start I'll pick up the next video then or the next segment of the video. Okay, so in the last part of this video I had to pause the recording because I didn't know how long it was going to take for the password to be in a to be set up and ready to be decrypted. And now, you know, it's about 1 minute later and it's ready to go. So we can go to connect again, RDP client, get password. Notice how it redirects you to this get Windows password option. And from here is where we're going to decrypt using the key we downloaded earlier, right? The, the, when we created our instance, we had that key that got, cre that got uh, created as well and associated with our instance. So to get the password for the administrator account we're going to be using to remote into our Windows system, you have to upload the key. So I'm going to upload the example key and it did. It decrypted it. So now we could decrypt the password, see it in front of us. Don't fret. Um, you don't have to remember all this. You can actually press this button to the left and it copies it into RAM on your computer for you to paste in. Remember earlier I downloaded a remote desktop file. I'll do it again just so you can see. Notice I got several of them down here. Click on it you will see a screen pop up. Let me show you what it looks like. It, it actually popped up on one of my other screens. This is what it looked like. This is a remote desktop connecting to your system over the internet. It's saying, hey, uh, do you want to trust this connection? Or at least, hey, do you want to connect to the system? Are you sure? And I say, yeah, I'm sure. I'm using the username administrator already in that RDP file. I'm going to copy, so actually right click or control V to paste in the password we copied. Hit connect. This is the certificate from the system saying, hey, I don't know who you are, 
or, or hey, you know, it is saying, I know who you are. It's, it's saying, here's a certificate, here's who I am. Are you sure you want to connect to me? You shouldn't, if you if you didn't do this, if, if you don't know what you're doing, uh, and you're con- just trying to connect to something over the internet, you should really pay attention to these. But we know we set this up, so it'll be fine. Hit connect, and it's remoting in right now to that Windows system, logging in, and here we are inside of Windows Server. It's setting up that administrator account right now, so that's why you're seeing some of the personalized settings options pop up and we've got the black screen. Here you should see some graphics in a few seconds, you know, like a desktop background. There you go. So it's popping up right now. We can use this system. I mean, we can create folders. We can go out to the internet and browse. Keep in mind it's a server operating system, so it's not... They're not designed out of the box to be used like a desktop OS to go browse the internet, as you really shouldn't use it that way. But you may want to go get like Firefox so that you don't have to run into all the uh, trusted site messages. But, you know, if you're going to use Internet Explorer, just keep in mind you've got to add an exception for every site you go to because this is kind of like a zero trust environment um, by default. But you can get around that by adding exceptions to just the sites you want to go to. So if you're trying to download MySQL, you can just do it all from here. And it's amazing. I challenge you to do a bandwidth test. You could use fast.com or speedtest.net or speed of me. And you'll see incredible speeds because you're on AWS's network right now. You've remoted in from wherever you are. So your bandwidth and the speed you get on your network really doesn't matter when you're on AWS's network. So be careful about what you do on here. I wouldn't I would not recommend you go on here and do anything illegal because AWS they can monitor that traffic. Um, this is running on their systems. Do not stay away from any any illegal use of these systems, but use them responsibly, use them to learn and uh, have fun as you do it. Feel free to shoot me a message, an email, or uh, uh, or look it up if you run into any issues here. So, uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope it's been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.